We can estimate with fractions. This is Lesson 7e. Remember that you can click on the description for more help. All right. We can estimate with fractions by rounding the fraction to 0 or 1. If the numerator is less than half of the denominator, the fraction is less than half. So take a look at these. We know that a half is the same thing as 2 fourths. This would reduce to 1 half. 3 6 would also reduce to 1, reduce to one half, and so would 4, four eighths, and so on. If the numerator is less than half of the denominator, like instead of 2 fourths, it's 1 fourth, then we would round it down to a 0. See? Less than half of 6 would be less than 3. So 2 6 would be rounded down to a 0. 4 eighths is half, so 3 eighths would be rounded down to the 0. If the numerator is more than half of the denominator, the fraction is more than half. So if we have 3 fourths or 4 6 or 5 eighths, those are more than half of the denominator, so these are more than half. We would round these up. If the fraction is less than half, we round down to the whole number. If the fraction is more than a half, we round up to the next whole number. Okay? So here's some examples. We're going to round to the nearest whole number. 7 eighths, well, 7 eighths is really close to 8 eighths, right? And when the numerator and denominator are the same, it's one whole. So if we have 7 eighths, it's really close to 8 eighths, and 7 is more than half of 8. It's more than a 4. We're going to round that to a 1. Okay? So we round it to the next whole number. 2 thirds. The 2 is more than half of a 3. 2 thirds is really close to 3 thirds, isn't it? So we're going to round that to a 1. Here we have 2 and 3 sixteenths. This 3 is way less than half of 16. So we're just going to round this one to a 2. It would have to be 8 sixteenths to be a half, wouldn't it? So 3 sixteenths is very small. It's closer to the 2. Here we have 4 and 8 ninths. Well, 8 ninths is really close to 9 ninths. That would be another one whole, wouldn't it? So the 8 is more than half of 9. So we're going to round this up. This mixed number would be rounded up to a 5. Okay? And estimating fractions with addition or subtraction will be more accurate than multiplication or division. So take a look at this. If we have 1 fifth plus 7, well, the 1 fifth is very, very tiny. The 1 is not more than half of 5. The 1 is very, very small. So we would round that to a 0 plus the 7. So this double wavy line, that means approximately. So 1 fifth plus 7 would be approximately 7. Okay? It would actually be 7 and 1 fifth, but it would round to 7. Now, look what happens Look at how accurate it is when we try doing multiplication. If we do 1 fifth times 7, if we round this 1 fifth to a 0, we've got 0 times 7. Well, that's 0. If we do it for real, we can do 1 fifth times 7 over 1, can't we? And the 7 times 1 is 7, and the 5 times 1 is 5, and it comes out to 1 and 2 fifths, not a 0. So see how it can change in accuracy with multiplication? All right, so it's going to be way more accurate to add or subtract with estimating fractions, okay? Let's take a look at this one. Bob has 2 and 7 eighths feet of wire and 1 and 1 fourth feet of wire. About how many feet of wire does he have? Now it says about, so that's going to be an estimation. So we add the 2 and 7 eighths plus the 1 and 1 fourth. We estimate this to be about a 3, and we round this down to just a 1 because that 1 is less than half the 4, see? So we've got 3 plus 1, so he's got about 4 feet of wire. We use the approximation symbol, see that? Okay, now it says to estimate the sum. We've got 12 and 5 eighths plus 3 and 1 ninth plus 4 and 1 third. This is more than half of 8. 4 eighths would be a half, so 5 eighths is more. So we're going to round this up to a 13. 3 and 1 ninth. That 1 is nowhere near half of 9, so we're going to round this down to the 3. 
4 and 1 third, that 1 third is not more than half, so we're just going to round this to the 4. And now we can add 13 plus 3, which is 16, plus 4 is 20. So it's approximately, double wavy line, approximately 20. Okay? It's not an exact answer, but we can get an approximate answer without having to get all the common denominators and, see? So it's quicker and we're just estimating. It says estimate the difference. Well, now it's saying to add 8 and 5 sevenths plus 2 and 5 six, and we have to add 3 and 1 tenth plus 2 and 1 eighth, and then we have to subtract this one from this one. See, there's a subtraction sign there. So we know from the order of operations we do inside the parentheses first, we can round this 8 and 5 sevenths to a 9 because 5 is more than half a 7, so we'd round up to the 9. And the 2 and 5, 6 would round up to a 3 because 5 is more than half a 6. So now we have got 9 plus 3, which is a 12. On this side, the 1 is not more than half of 10. So we're going to round it down to the 3. And this 2 and 1 eighth, the 1 eighth is not more than half of the 8. So it's going to round down to a 2. So now on this side, we have 3 plus 2, which is a 5. So we have 12 minus 5. So the answer is going to be around 7, approximately 7. See? So we can even do estimating fractions when there's several steps. Just remember your order of operations and do inside the parentheses first. Okay? So now you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 97. And pay very, very close attention to the numbers. Try to round correctly. Remember to use the benchmarks of more than half, less than half. And remember that about and proximate means we need to estimate our answer, okay? Now, watch these three videos if you're still confused. This grade 5 math video, 6.3, is very helpful, and so is 4.2 and 4.6. These three videos should really, really help you, or try watching this one again. It's going to be links to our previous videos on fractions that are in this GED math playlist, okay? Now, I know we've talked about this before, but we're going to have another video lesson on writing fractions in the standard grid answer sheet. It's going to be lesson 7F because I'm going to have some examples for you that have been talked about, like problems we've talked about in lesson 7. Okay, so there'll be multiplication and division examples, and we'll write the answers in that standard grid. Okay, if you feel like you completely understand the multiplication and division of fractions and you understand filling out fractions in the answer sheet, then go on to the next lesson. Okay. Go on to lesson eight. But if you think you could use a little bit more help, well, then I'll see you at the next video, 7F. Okay? Hope you have a great day, and I hope you do well on the skill focus. Bye.